Hey, it's Milton Deli Homes Chuck here. We got a big list today, 19 properties coming right off the weekend from Friday. And we'll get right to it at 610 Hamilton. It's the first one up, 3449. It's in Amesbury, so it's 1130 square feet. Looks like it's got two car parking in the driveway. And when we talk about, I know a lot of sellers watch these videos. And one of the best things you can do, especially in this time of year, get that driveway sealed up, make it nice and black. It creates an awesome first impression. And so, like I said, 1130 square feet on this one. It looks like a laminate floor. The kitchen's okay. They replaced the vanity. That vanity's about $100 at Home Depot. It's nothing fancy. And, uh, and then they've got the finished basement downstairs. I don't know if that's a vinyl floor or a tile or what. Uh, I don't know. These models, they would have had a tough time at 330 last year with something like this. We have seen appreciation. We've seen good steady demand. We've seen very little inventory and listings out there. So these guys, I mean, comparing to some of the recent sales, they're not that far off. They still seem a little bit high. Uh, Gifford is next one, 354.9. And uh, it's the same model. It's on the other side of Thompson. So we're talking about probably three or four years newer. Um, inside you've got just that one big open room and then the kitchen off to the side uh, looks like it's decorated a little bit better there's no photos of the finished basement although I haven't checked the virtual tour which is something you can definitely do just up top 10,000 higher than the other one I don't know tough call the uh, Cartmer Way's next one, 369. We had a, a sale in the low 350s over on Panton, the next street over. And typically the townhomes do sell higher. So 369, it's got a finished basement, three bedroom, and it's a laminate floor in the living dining room. So beyond there, I don't really know a lot about this one. We'd have to wait for the photos. However, Sometimes you get the leg up on other buyers when you don't even wait for the photos and you just actually go check this stuff out. Every little edge you can have in a very competitive market matters. So you may even want to go have a look at that one anyways. 3879 for this one here on Evans Terrace. It's very near and dear to my heart because it's the home that we bought back in 2005 when we first moved to Milton. So these guys ended up... Uh, you know, coming to buy the home and, you know, four or five years later selling it, uh, doing it on their own. It's called a mirror posting. So what that means is the sellers are acting as their own listing agent and they've just hired a company to put it up on the MLS system, usually for a nominal fee. And so you can bring in a buyer's agent, you can bring your own person in to negotiate on, on, uh, on your behalf. So 3879, I mean, Gosh, even last year, like I said, this would have seemed really high. We've seen some good sales. And there's actually four homes in a row on this street. You'll see it's the funniest thing. All four of them have for sale signs. And I think a couple of them have actually sold already. So the, uh, the there you go. 1380 square feet. It doesn't look like it has a finished basement. Um, I'm not sure if they upgraded the floors or anything. We don't have a lot of information from it. Um, it's a nice floor plan. The master's nice and big. There's two full bathrooms upstairs. Um, Semi-detached. So this is the list of Evans. I think there's three or four on the list. Lots of activity on this street. 415 is the price. Uh, the last model that sold was down on Robson like this. And uh, it was up in the forest. So I think that uh, no hardwood is probably not helping them too much. They got those green apples. That's a secret weapon. And... I don't know. It seems okay. The basement looks all right. I don't know what kind of floor that is, but I think that it's clean and tidy and simple. And the stained fence, I think, adds a little something there, too, if you like being outside. Much larger lots than you find in the new areas. This is a 46 by 80 foot lot. Some of the detached homes don't even have lots this big. 415, perhaps. I don't know. This one here is the same model, actually. It's just across the street. 435 is the price. I don't know if that's going to go anywhere. There's really not a lot of photos. Maybe if it's awesome inside, but I just, I can't see it. It just seems a little high for uh, for the area and for the kind of home. Bell Street is 459 and uh, there's been another recent one that's listed over, I think it's on Clover Park. And so the kitchen on this one is kind of the middle and it's, it's, it's a, it's a, interesting different layout you've never seen a layout like this before and then you've got a dining on one side you get a family on the other side of the kitchen but it's all kind of sideways and it doesn't really have the open concept feel um 
but it does back on to what looks like a park there just on Bell Street. So that is definitely a positive thing. The one on Clover Park is backing onto Dairy Road. So competitive advantage, absolutely. Uh, Farmstead's next one up for $69.9. It's uh, Spirit Plan 4, I think. 1835 square feet. You've got a front room here, like a separate, you could use it as an office, then dining family kitchen. And some of the ones that have sold in the last few months have had the hardwood floors, they've had even upgraded counters, better kitchens, that kind of stuff, and they've got up in the 470s. Is there enough of a price break on this one? Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's not a lot for sale. They might end up doing well. Sometimes we see that is that a really good model is going to is going to push the bar up and then we find a much less upgraded model that for some reason piggybacks it and gets pretty close to that price. Is it fair? Not really, but you got to do your homework too. So Bustle Crescent looks like this one's over 2,000 square feet. It looks like it's 72 feet across the back, which is a good thing. Um, decent upgrades inside. I've been in this model. To me, it doesn't feel like it's over 2,000 square feet, but I'll take their word for it. And you can see how it sort of bends out in the back. Uh, 519 is the price for a single car garage. They're really banking on that lot. I mean, I'd like to see almost a finished basement or something else to push that value up. Uh, Turner 523, we're talking about a, a double car garage. The home itself is not huge inside. The garage takes up a lot of the first floor. But there are a couple rooms there, and you can see the kitchen they've upgraded with uh, with granite countertops. Okay, pause for a second. White stove, black fridge. White stove, black fridge. To me, that I mean, that's just it doesn't work. You gotta have matching appliances. If you're looking for the big dollars, you have to make it move in ready. You gotta make buyers say, "Wow, this is I could live with this." And so, anyways, that's uh, that's the story on this one. Five twenty three is the price. Uh, Within range of fare, I think Galbraith 549. Now we're getting up to uh, to some of the bigger homes, and it says it's a Columbia model. I don't know how big it is. I have seen this model before. I think it's 25, 2600 square feet. There's no finished basement on this one. You're nice and close to the movie theater. You can go watch the Hunger Games if you want. Although probably by the time you close on this home, it may still be in theaters. It may not be. Anyhow, digressing, uh, you do have a lot of restaurants close by. It's probably about a 20-minute walk to the GO train, so it, it is possible. It's not the closest, but uh, Dempsey's the next one up at 565. It's a... Uh, it, it, the old model is called a Scotswood. It's also called a Huxley. It was called a Scotswood when these guys bought it. Uh, just under 2,400 square feet. Nice floor plan. You've got some big mature trees here. Uh, hardwood floors. Now, I don't know if that's the same hardwood uh, in both rooms. I think that when you have two different hardwoods, it definitely messes the flow up in the house. And you've got a decent kitchen here. Uh, the bathroom, on the other hand, most people are going to need to rip that out. The green just is, I, I don't know, it's its not a universally accepted choice. And it looks like there's some laminate floors upstairs. It's actually a great floor plan with a bit of polishing on this one. I think they're going to do really well. And it looks like they, it, it says a partly finished basement. Now, I don't know if that, I don't see anything in the description here about that. There's no measurement here. So, We've seen these models up in the 580s, 590s, so if you pick this one up for close to asking and you put a bit of work into it, it would be an excellent choice. Morse Place 639.9. This is a Sutton Hills model, one of my favorites. It's by Madame. It's right by the um, the Blockbuster, the Rabba, if you know where that plaza is at Darien Trudeau. Not far from there. And uh, what I like about this floor plan, you've got a, a separate little room in the front. You've got a separate dining room and then a big kitchen, especially for the size of the home at 29. It feels like a 
more than 3,000 square foot kitchen, and that opens directly up to the family room. We got some pot lights, a little bit bold on some of the color choices. I think some of those blue accents are actually drawing your eyes away from some of the upgrades in the home, glass shower, and most of the homes in this neighborhood are, uh, are, are closing in on 10 years, sometimes more. This was the last little pocket that Madame built, so it's a much newer home than, than the homes around it. Uh, finished basement certainly helps, although we always look and say, if it's a poorly done finished basement, it can even cost more to rip all the bad work out. But I'm not saying that it is here. There's just only one photo I, I can't really see. You gotta go see it in person. 639 to me seems like definitely the right price if it's uh, looking good. Now, what doesn't seem like the right price to me is this one over on Crozier Crescent, uh, 3,700 square feet with a finished basement. Uh, the, the concrete, doesn't look the best in person. Um, I don't live too far from this home. So you got five bedrooms on this one. It's a great floor plan, but you, we've got the same model with a finished basement over on uh, on Ramshaw, and it's 635000 So these guys are asking for 165000 more, and... You know, I get that that one's not perfect on uh, on Ramshaw, but it's, believe me, these guys aren't going anywhere. It's a great street. Believe me, the neighbors are terrific, but not uh, not going to get that price. So third side road, 929 is the price, 71 acres, and there's all kinds of outbuildings on, on a home like this. It's To value a farm is, is a complicated process, so I'm showcasing it. I can't tell you if it's a good deal or not. It looks like it, for that amount of land, if you're under a million, you know that the rest of it's kind of bonus. You can't replace a lot of these farms with these extra buildings for the price that they're asking. So if you find the right use in there, you can get it for oftentimes a really, really good price compared to starting with vacant land. Inglis, 1.129. We've seen that these homes have kind of flatlined a bit in the Brookville Estates area. Um, haven't seen a lot of positive growth in the last couple of years. There's been some competition. We've had some good, uh, good listings even in the last 60 days that have come out. So this is a bungalow. That's a good competitive difference. And it does have a finished walkout basement. So there's a lot of square footage finished here. Um, I actually like the pen how they did them in a circle in the dining room and then you've got your basement here with the walkout and uh, and a good piece of land you've got some forest behind competitive we profiled one I think last week at 1.2 very nice looking home so these guys are are looking like a very good option another one on Inglis right here 1.239 triple car garage same as the previous inside I think there's some nice features um, I have a feeling there's probably a little bit more demand for uh, for bungalows, I, th I would think, at this time. I mean, it's always, you can live in a bungalow forever, whereas the two-story, it has a bit of a shelf life for some people where they just don't want to deal with stairs anymore. So that's helping both these guys. Ennis Claire, 1.45. Uh, it's more than 5,000 square feet. It's got a, a separate triple garage, and it looks like it's even got a little bit of a, a loft above there. 2.367 acres, six bedrooms. Um, I, it might be a neat story here where it's modeled after a shipbuilder's home in PEI. I don't know how many people are really going to treasure that, but it looks like a real big home. And uh, so wait for the photos on this one. I think the possibility might be there to uh, to definitely get it. But it's that's a niche product when you start getting into um, you know building more from a historical perspective. Whereas if you look at some of the ones in uh, in Brookville Estates, much wider audience for something like that. Two point seven million is this one on Twenty Five Side Road, and um, you've got a fountain coming in. I mean, it's very ornate in here. Uh, lots of details. The pool looks terrific. I mean, that's definitely a, a big selling feature here. And with the mural on the wall, well, maybe a little personal taste there. Uh, check the virtual tour. Some more, more uh, photos. Seven washrooms. And uh, this one's 7,000 square, or sorry, 15,000 square feet and a 7,000 square foot walkout basement. Uh, it's a big piece of land, 216 acres. It actually seems, I mean, if you can call a $2.7 million home a good deal, if uh, if it's actually in good shape inside, the basic elements on this one definitely look like... Uh, yeah, it just you couldn't replace it for that price. So that's the list for today. Enjoy your day, and we'll see you back here uh, tomorrow with more Milton Daily Homes.